Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ray. I'm a detransition male, and today we're going to be exploring trans women who who have who are trying to define what is a woman. And I just find this thread so fascinating from like a philosophical, anthropological perspective because it really goes to show some of the twisted mental gymnastics that people go through philosophically to try and defend the logical and philosophical coherency of the gender ide identity ideology. And I'm going to expose why this is all built on a philosophical, um, you know, uh, foundation of sand, basically. So this person uh, tr tries to propose a definition um, and um, the reason why they're doing so is because they want to have a short, non-circular answer um, to when conservatives ask gotcha questions. Because, you know, so this person is obviously smart enough to recognize that when you say, well, what is a woman? A woman is anyone who identifies as a woman. Well, that is a circular definition. And anyone with a brain can realize that that is not a very satisfying philosophical definition to what is a woman because you're using the term woman in the definition of the thing you're trying to define, which is circular, which doesn't really give you that much information. So in order to get around that, this person proposes the following definition. A woman should be identified as an adult human being who identifies as female. <laughs> um so obviously this is a riff on the sort of gender critical definition of um, uh, a woman, which says that a woman is a adult uh, human f female, which is obviously not a circular definition because um, the, the concept of female is reducible to biology, which is sort of objective. Um, so it's, it's not circular. It tells you new information. It's like, oh, I don't know what a woman is. Well, what is a woman? It's a female. And then a female is like this other concept. Then you got to learn about biology and figure out what a female is. But here they're saying an adult human being who identifies as a female well the reason why this definition does not work why it leads to like a philosophical contradiction is because okay so you, you have to ask yourself well what is the female suppose you don't know what a female is then you go off and learn what a female is well a female is a biological concept a female is someone who produces eggs, an organism that produces eggs. A female, <laughs> you know, if you want to know what a female is, ask your mom. Your mom, your mom gave birth to you. That's what a female is. It, like being female has to do with reproduction. It has to do with biology. It has to do with uh, egg production. You know, being the type of organism that produces eggs. That is what a female is. Um, Okay, well, once you learn about what a female is, you sort of also will learn that as such, as being a biological category, biological categories are not things that you identify into. The concept of identifying into a biological category makes as much sense as, you know, identifying into the category of a squirrel. You know, if you, a, a, an adult uh, squirrel being is anyone who identifies as a squirrel. Well, that obviously doesn't make sense because squirrel is a biological category. And we all know intuitively that you don't identify into biological categories because biological categories are um, objective. Like, you know, there, there's an objective difference between a tree, a squirrel, a tiger, a chimpanzee, etc. And a squirrel is not a chimpanzee. And if a chimpanzee identified as a squirrel, it doesn't make him a squirrel. <laughs> or likewise, if a human identifies as a cat, that doesn't make them a cat. Why? Because biological categories aren't necessarily objective insofar as they refer to a reality independent of your mental categorizing so so a, bio, a biological category is precisely a type of category such that it doesn't make sense to identify into biological categories because biological categories are supposed to be mind independent 
So this is why this definition doesn't work. And ultimately, it just reduces down to this notion of subjectivity, this notion of it. And and, 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 and then it kind of goes back to the whole like, well, a woman is anyone who identifies as, as, as a woman because the key thing there is about identification. It's about subjectivity. It's about just your feelings. Oh, I just feel like I'm a female. I just feel like I just woke up one day and I feel like I'm, I'm a female. That doesn't, you know, I woke up one day and I felt like a cat. Like I maybe I have a, you know, a phantom tail or something. I feel, I feel like I have a tail. That doesn't make you like a non-human animal. Um, so obviously that does not work. Is there anything wrong with that definition? Let's see what people have to say. In my experience, they don't tend to accept these definitions or any other. Well, yeah, because they're philosophically incoherent. That's why we don't accept <laughs> those definitions because they're not, they're not coherent. Um, okay. So, um, a strange game. The only winning move is to not play. So, when I was a trans activist, th this is actually the the philosophical move that I made for a long time. Is that is I just refused to, to play this game of definitions. I just refused to engage in this game of providing definitions because I took a sort of what's called Wittgensteinian quietism, which where you say that it is really hard to give necessary and sufficient conditions to define basic concepts like chair. There's this common thing like, oh, you can't define what a chair is because common concepts, you know, don't admit of, you know, easy, um, like easy definitions that don't have edge cases. Cause you know, a lot of our normal concepts have edge cases and they're fuzzy. And, and this is part of the Wittgensteinian who, who is a 20th century philosopher who talked about language in terms of language games. It's about pragmatism. So it's more about like how concepts are utilized rather than like this notion of giving like precise, logical, necessary, and sufficient conditions. Um, nevertheless, <laughs> the reason why woman uh, must be defined as adult human female is because we now find ourselves in a social reality such that this has become a contested thing and we need to define these things in order to safeguard the social reality of womanhood that was previously taken for granted and was sort of like an implicitly understood thing such that you know we need to define what a woman is so that we can protect woman prisons we need to define what a woman is so that we can protect women's sports we need to define what it is to be a woman so we can protect you know single sex changing spaces that is why it's like necessary to provide these necessary and sufficient conditions that were previously implicit previously tacit previously just pragmatic and understood by everyone until you know transgender ideology came to rise up in our society that challenged the queer theory this you know definition that was previously just intuitively understood by everybody um so this is kind of the same thing um it's like ultimately it's less about coming up with a definition of woman and more about determining why measuring what makes a woman is important well yeah it's exactly what i said the reason why it's important is because we have all these social contexts like prisons single sex spaces um you know uh uh crisis centers for women where it's important to safeguard women against you know males who were you know if you if you were just sexually assaulted by a male you might want to have a safe space for females to exist in a place that is safe from males because the very idea of a male someone who has a penis is going to be triggering for that person and so we want to protect them by separating that, that out so you want to have a woman only crisis center well you know you have to know what a woman is in order to, to do that in order to actually make that a safe place for those uh for those females um Bigots are biggest. Nothing we say will move them. Okay, you know, just admit you don't have a good definition. Um, the world is complex. Falling for simple narratives is foolish, and anyone who only demands simple narratives aren't capable of being reasoned with. Kindergarten terms are only suited for kindergarten. Okay, well, your whole entire ideology is premised on a delusional, ontological, philosophical fantasy that identifying as something makes you that thing. That's kindergarten logic. 
the kindergartner thinks that, oh, like I identify as a dragon. That makes me a dragon. I, you know, that's kindergarten. Like kindergarten is when you think that your imagination makes you the thing that you imagine yourself as. That's kindergarten. In in reality, in, in the adult world, we recognize that merely identifying as something doesn't make you that thing. Um Okay, so here's one. Um, a woman is an adult human who is part of the gender category assigned to phenotypically female people at birth. So this sounds like it might be non-circular or there, like it, maybe it sounds like it's getting around this objection that... Um, that like, you know, a woman is anyone who would define, who identifies as a woman as like a, as like a circular definition, but it, it like doesn't really work because what does it mean to be part of a gender category? Okay. So assigned phenotypically female people at birth. Okay. AKA females. You're not, you're not assigned female. You, 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 you detect, you observe that, that people are female and that observation process, that detection process is incredibly accurate in like 99.9% .9 of cases. <laughs> um, well, what does it mean to be part of that gender category? That means that there are certain social expectations, social norms, social rules that are stereotypes and expectations that have come up and, and arisen based on the fact that, you know, you're, you're like, Females, so like women, females are you know there's there's social norms that expect them to play the role of a mother, for example. Well, what does it mean to be part of the gender category? Well, okay, so part of the gender category is stereotypes, such that you know um, females uh wear f feminine clothing well does that mean that if you're a male and you wear a dress that <laughs> that like makes you a female no it doesn't make you a woman if you wear a dress like a man can wear makeup can wear a dress have long hair that doesn't make make him a woman it just makes him gender non-conforming but arguably he's part of the gender category because the gender category is all these social stereotypes associated with being female well if a man is gender non-conforming they're by definition f like um acting out the gender category or these gender stereotypes associated with females well just because you're a man and you like wear a dress that doesn't make you a woman <laughs> just because you're a man and you like have some feminine mannerisms that doesn't make you a woman because there are plenty of gay men who are super feminine, often much more feminine than a lot of trans women, and they're they're men and it, just, it doesn't make them female. So so this idea of like part of a gender category is it, it's, it's like a meaningless definition. It's philosophically incoherent unless you can define this this what does it mean to be a part of, of, of a gender category? It's like incoherent and it's going to ultimately reduce down to this notion of identification. And this person recognizes this. This is the OP. They said, that definition just sounds like a longer version of someone who identifies as one, including identifying as female into the definition of women is that it ties womanhood into femaleness. Um... So, <laughs> and of course, like, uh, there's debate about this because the, the real pure trans ideologues, the, the, like people who are, are like the, the, the purest ideologues in terms of the, the gender identity ideology, they're going to say, well, trans women don't need to transition. I believe that tying the two concepts together is actually a form of trans medicalism. I, you're not a woman unless you transition to female. In my view, a woman is anyone who's part of the social category of woman. P people who are born phenotypically female are automatically placed into that category, but others can also join the social category by choice. Well, what is the social category? Again, it is a set of stereotypes in regards to behavior, appearance, mannerisms, dress, you know, that are correlated or you know statistically correlated with being female they are female associated or aka their social stereotypes and that social stereotypes are socially constructed to some extent 
Um, so if, uh, you know, if, if being a nurse is part of the social stereotype of, for females, if a man is, is a nurse, does that mean that he's joined the social category by choice and is therefore a, a woman? No, that doesn't make sense. If a man, um, wears makeup or just like is really into makeup or likes wearing women's clothing, like he has thereby joined the, the social category of woman by choice. Um, but that doesn't make you a woman like, and, and, and this whole idea ultimately reduces down to this philosophical fiction of, um, you know, that like identifying as something or that, or that you can choose into what you want to exist as, but we don't we don't talk about this in any other social category, even within social categories that we acknowledge to be socially constructed. So, in the woke left, in the same progressive circles that trans people operate in, it is the standard line to say that race is a social construct. So there's a social category of race, a social category of being black. Now, <laughs> do we say that you can just choose to be um, black? If, like if you're a white person, can you just choose to, to be black? No, we don't say that, even though they will acknowledge that being black is a social category. It, it, it is a socially constructed category of whiteness and blackness because, for example, like there was a time when Irish people were not considered to be white, but now Irish people are considered to be white because it's kind of socially arbitrary who's white and who's not white. So, you know, the whole concept of like blackness and whiteness and these, you know, these color categories, they're, they're, they're socially constructed, but they're, they're so, so they're social categories. But we say that if you're white, you can't identify as black. Well, if gender is also has all these social constructions, you know, like, like how how come you can identify into being a woman but you can't identify into being black if both woman and black are both social categories well they'll say well the social construct of being black is such that that social construct says that part of the social construct of blackness is you can't I, I, I identify into it but they'll say that the social construct of gender is such that you can identify it into gender well says who says who <laughs> why would you think like no you you can't just argue for that you 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 you, you like, can't just assume that you have to you have, you have to argue for the idea that the social category of womanhood is such that you can identify into it but that's the whole thing under debate but arguably it's more logical it's more coherent it's non-circular to say that the social category of woman is a reference to the basic biological fact of being female and as such as a biological category those biological categories are not things that you identify into just like you don't identify to be a squirrel you don't identify to be a cat you don't ident identify to be a chimpanzee you don't identify to be a cow you don't identify to be female because female is a biological concept it has to do with biological facts biological realities biological realities are are independent of our categories um, so whether or not you're a cat doesn't depend on, <laughs> you know, like, like, like all, all humans could die tomorrow and there'd still be cats because catness, you, you, your, your reality as a cat doesn't depend on what humans think. And similarly, your femaleness doesn't depend on what humans think. You either, um, produce eggs or you are the type of organism that is, um, development developmentally predisposed to go down a pathway such that your body typically under normal environmental circumstances produces eggs or you're not like that, that that's a ontological fact that's mind in, independent um okay so i'm not arguing that people have to transition to be a woman i'm just saying that if you're trans it's because you identify as female because that's what it means to be trans because if you weren't trans you would be happy as your sex assigned at birth no then this person says towing the ideological line being the hardcore gender identity ideologue towing the you know the dogma they're saying non-binary people are trans too and a large portion of them never change their sex char characteristics so 
this kind of explodes the whole thing. And it's just like, there's no logic to this. There's no objectivity to this. There's no evidential basis to this. There's no ontological reality to this. It's just like, you know, it, it it's just pure subjectivity, pure identity. And because they're saying like, oh, you can be a male and you can be um, totally happy with being a male. You can be totally happy with your you know maleness with your body you you, you 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 can have no gender dysphoria whatsoever no body dysmorphia whatsoever you can totally be happy with your male body but so long as you like identify as something you are that thing because it's totally disconnected it's a pure subjective feeling it's totally internal and that this is like the whole paradoxical contradiction inherent to trans ideology is they want to have their cake and eat it too. They want to say that, oh, it's about this, this gender incongruence. It's about this dys dysphoria about like, oh, I'm like male, but I want to be female and there's this mismatch and I wish I was female. But then other people, the, the more pure ideologues want to say like, no, that's, that's transphobic. That's internalized transphobia because you're saying that you have to transition to be a real woman and they say like, Oh, well, if you're a male and, 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 and you have a beard and you just, you know, identify, you just have a feeling like, like you don't have to hate your body to be trans. You don't have to, um, you know, have dysphoria to, to, to be trans that that's trans medicalism. You, you're, you're a true scum if you do that. And, you know, but, but there's a whole other category of trans people who want to say that, being trans is like a biological disease. It's a medical condition about having this like hatred of, of your body. And so, you know, treatment should be, you know, like covered by medical insurance because it's this like biological disease, like having cancer or something. And we need to treat this disease. And then you have the other radical ideologues who are saying, no, it's, it's not a disease. It's like a pure subjectivity and you don't have to hate your body to be trans so they're trying to have their cake and eat it too um but you could define non-binary as people who identify as neither male nor female and then it's like i don't think that all non-binary people would agree with that framing <laughs> so like and then this person's like they might not agree with it but they wouldn't have much to say in response without falling into the trap of circular definitions and i get that I'm probably starting to get annoying, but I'm a philosophy major, and circular definitions are illogical. Ooh, I'm gonna, you can't, you can't say that. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, do you think that sex and gender are the same thing? Maybe I've completely misunderstood your points, but since your definition of woman includes identifying as female and your definition of non-binary includes identifying as neither male nor female, that just means that female equals woman and male equals man and non-binary equals neither. Um, I mean, this shows the absurdity, the logical incoherence of the entire trans movement because they can't agree on basic stuff. There, there, there's no coherency to this. It, it's all, it, it's a house of cards. It's built on a foundation of sand. There's no philosophical basis to this. Like it's just, they're just making it up. It's just pure subjectivity. And they're trying to say that like, oh, like this should be like a medical thing, like a biological thing that this should be covered by, ins by public insurance, by like funded by taxpayers with through Medicaid and Medicare, because that's like a real disease. And like, no, it like the concept of trans is completely like, it, it doesn't like, um, Oh, whoops. I didn't want to do that. Um, yeah. So <laughs> it's like, uh, it, th this whole thing just illustrates that the the, the trans ideology, gender ide ad identity ideology, it, it's just postmodernism taken to the extreme. It, it's just it's it's like it's exploded the concept of objectivity, exploded any reference of objectivity in our epistemology, and it's just like oh like. It's just purely subjective. It's it's just a feeling. It's just this. It's, it's an inner reality, which is why I think the most accurate like way to define the the gender identity ideology movement is as as a spiritual movement, as a religious movement, because it's non it's non falsifiable. It's about inner knowing. 
it's like you know it, it it's like purely spiritual it's about having a spiritual awakening it's about having a spiritual realization and like i am a spiritual person i'm not going to denigrate spirituality but i'm just saying like you have to be honest with like with the public like it's either a biological disease based on body dysmorphia of hating your body um and you're gonna like get that medical disease covered or it's this like totally spiritual thing where you can't define it it's not objective it doesn't have to do with material reality it, it doesn't have to do with objectivity it, it doesn't have to do with ontology it's it's just like pure subjectivity pure spiritual reality um this person's like okay how do you define female um when used for humans synonym of a woman an adult human being who identifies as female um the biology definition for animals and plants can stay the same even though it would make more sense to rename them actually biologists already kind of do but there's no need to ever reduce people to just exclusively their genitals and, and reproduction okay well <laughs> are are humans not animals did I skip a class in biology when I was learning about evolution? Are 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 are, are like humans not animals? Like maybe, maybe I missed something in my biology class, but I'm pretty sure humans are animals. And I'm pretty sure whatever biological definition of femaleness is applicable and valid for for animals, for non-human animals, it is the exact same ontological category for humans because humans are animals. So this, and I love how they're putting like biology in like quotation marks, quote unquote biology, as if it's like, you know, just like made up or whatever. But no, this is the ridiculous double standard is they're trying to say that like, oh, well, so somehow humans are an exception to this because we're not animals. No, we are animals um biologically trans people are not the same as the people of their assigned sex and that's before medical intervention um with both definitions it's inaccurate to claim trans people are their assigned sex like that doesn't make any sense Th this person is acknowledging we should keep consistent definitions between humans and animals though it's fine to accept a biological based definition of female as long as you have a separate socially mentally based definition of woman mentally based definition of woman aka gender stereotypes um i disagree entirely see there, there, there's no agreement this is what i'm saying is like the whole gender movement is based on a total philosophical confusion and they can't even agree on themselves in regards to what is like the proper dogma and the, and the most radical dogmatists of the transgender ideology are going to say that's pure subjectivity and otherwise you're your trans medicalist and that's like transphobic because they want to say that like if you're a male you have a beard and you have you don't hate your sex that you can identify as a woman and you're just as much a woman as as like as like anybody else um It's still pretty much circular though, because what is a female definition C woman? Um, yeah, I mean, this is what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> like, um, it's, it, it's, it's just ludicrous. Like th 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 there's no there, there, like it, it, it's totally incoherent. It's like philosophically baseless. It's, it's so confused and it's sort of erasing our ability to talk about things in a way that is logical, coherent, grounded in facts, grounded in basic epistemology, basic metaphysics. And it's just sort of like eroding our ability to refer to reality in an objective way and like this is why the whole trans movement the whole gender ideology movement is like based on a philosophical house of cards and th there's nothing there it's just p and 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 like ultimately the the most radical ideologues the most radical gen genderists are going to sort of like fall back to this spirituality this radical postmodern spirituality inner knowing and you know this is why it, it is it is a new religious movement um based on sp a spiritual concept of the human being as having an inner gender soul that is not provable that is not objective that is not grounded in reality but you just sort of like know it um you just have an inner knowing 
and and that's what it all comes down to and, and they want us to like rearrange all of society based on like their religion that's kind of imposing their religion on the rest of us and they say that if you don't believe in our spiritual concepts and you're you're hateful you're a bigot you're a terrible person you must want us dead no i don't want you dead i don't i don't hate you i just disagree philosophically with the entire like uh conceptual apparatus that you've built the foundations of your political movement with which is really a religious political movement so okay that's enough uh for this video thanks for watching take care bye bye